Hello to India. This is Professor Markus Launer from Ostfalia University in Suderburg, close to Uelzen in Germany. Thank you very much for having me to listening to my video and for this cooperation between Germany and India. I'm very, very excited. Thank you very much, Dr. Srivedi, for your kind support, lovely uh, assistance uh, to make this happen, this German-India collaboration. Thank you very much, Professor Kandapan Bala Subramanian from Taylor's University in Malaysia, who arranged the meeting. And as far as I know, that's your alma mater in India. And I would have been so excited to come However, after trying four times to apply for a visa, uh, we had to make it online. I apologize for that. So I will speak today about uh, artificial intelligence and in the era of um, analytics and I will go and give you an overview. I will talk about service management. That's my special field, automotive. That's very important in Germany and very exciting the FinTech industry. The question is, are we managing artificial intelligence or will artificial intelligence manages us? So I'm from University of Mannheim. I studied there Diplom Kaufmann, Business Administration. I made my PhD at the Tallinn University of Technology in Estonia. I have an international European PhD. And I work since 2011 at Osfalia University of Applied Sciences in Germany. I have 20 years of job experience. And thereof, I was nine years in the United States, in Charlotte, North Carolina but also in New York City. I traveled intensively uh, all over the world. I made research about e-learning, digital trust and teamwork and intuition. And out of this local European funded research projects, we made international global uh, studies. And I can invite you to participate in an global study on rational and intuitive decision-making, which we will start in India probably end of the year. I traveled all over the world. As you can see on the top right, I was in India for two weeks. I traveled through Rajasthan. Yeah, I talked to priests, as you can see, and were in many other countries as well. I connect to researchers internationally around the world, uh, even online. And I visiting conferences as I wanted to visit yours. And uh, I was a lot of times in the United States, all over Europe and in Asia. I organized myself workshops and seminars. It started in 2018. This is the first uh, group that visited us in Suderberg. In 2019, the second group, a little bit larger already, and we participated in an e-learning conference in Lübeck, close to Hamburg. In my private institute, non-university, we started to integrate refugees and migrants coming to Germany. Then we had to outsource my international conference into my institute. And so we do conferences and seminars in my institute, and you see in the picture, we have lots of universities working together with us, and I'm very thankful for that. We have the uh, International Online Conference on Contemporary Studies and Management, it's COSIM, and we started that online in 2022, and I would like to invite you to participate in this conference. It's a 36 hours conference around the world, around the clock. When I go sleeping in Germany, Professor Kalimak in Korea will take over, Dave Marshall in the Philippines. And when I wake up, the session is in India, and then I continue with the moderation. We have the key topics here, research direction and management, hospitality management, intuition, also social projects, you name it. 
This is my international editorial team for the quality insurances from all over the world. You're on the top line, you see Professor Kandapan Palasabhumamiam, Candy, and uh, many others around the world. We have an international review team, so very professional with a double blind review and international session chairs in each region of the world, we have a local session chair taking care of all the presenters. So I can invite you to particip participate in our COSIM conference online. All around the world, everybody can participate. Artificial intelligence, the topic was about the new era. So what are the areas? You remember first and second industrial revolution starting in uh, 1820, 1840. And in the graph, you see the enormous growth in GDP, wealth generating. So for the last about 200 years, people have a much higher living standards, at least as you can see, United States, Germany, UK, South Korea, and then other countries as well. We have the third industrial revolution that was described uh, as renewable energy, converting buildings into power plants, information highways, smart everything. That was the next generation. And today we talk about the fourth industrial revolution and the industry of things or industry 4.0. You see all these new technologies, cloud computing, mobile, 3D, robotics, big data, RFID, cognitive computing, and many, many other online technologies that shape the world now. Now we're coming to the new area of artificial intelligence, big data, blockchain, metaverse. And I gave some lectures on uh, Art of, uh, new modern technologies and teaching. And I was shocking the teachers how teaching will look like in the future. Now, hopefully I can shock you how the future will be all around your home and your business. So how to teach a very complicated IT field, artificial intelligence, it's very technical, very high mathematical algorithms programming how can you teach that to business people and students? And then I observed, even there are many, many, many thousands of research articles and books, there is an absence of theoretically grounded research still, especially for business people, as you can see here in this literature reviews. I looked at some uh, 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 lecture books uh, very interesting for managers, understand the major AI techniques. Yes, we need to talk about that. How are they used in business? Determine which AI techniques can solve your business problem. It's a little bit more complicated now. Decide whether to build or buy an AI solution. Typical uh, controlling topic I teach. Estimate the financial value and frame a robust policy to guide responsible use for AI. Very interesting points we need to talk. So there's more a generative AI book now on the market. Generative AI will be a very interesting topic because so far, and we'll, we'll talk about that more often, programmers or managers told the systems what they need to do. Now it will change from generative AI, AI. They will do the intelligent, creative work and will tell people, humans, what to do. So there's a transformative impact of generative AI. The book talks about lots of um, applications in art, music, and content creation. So it's very practical for beginners. Or you the coming wave. Mustafa Suleiman, you need to know this length, this name in the AI um, sphere because he's co-founder in CEO of Inflection, but previously he was co-founder of DeepMind. And DeepMind will, will need to know if you go to history of 
artificial intelligence, which where we don't have time to talk about it today, and it's very sad, but DeepMind was one of the key companies in um, artificial intelligence, and Elon Musk and Bill Gates were invested, and they made hundred millions of dollars. So there are lots of literature reviews, typically, and, 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 and journals who publish them, and I listed nine of them that have a lot of uh, uh, literature and articles about artificial intelligence. Interesting enough, if you look at this analysis, most of the articles were on machine learning. Very interesting. So there are many literature reviews you can get easily in overview. And the point is they all get old as soon as they are published. Yeah, and look at some newer ones, for example, here uh, about artificial intelligence in information systems research. Interesting enough, 44 studies about definition, just the definition of AI. And we will come to that, but there will be no way we can clearly define what artificial intelligence is because it's a growing uh, sphere, a growing market, a growing research topic. They talk about uh, the current state of AI, and I can tell you it changes every day. And uh, AI technologies are used by ES researchers and here, like I said, machine learning. We need to learn about business capabilities, automating and manufacturing business processes. Sounds a little bit boring, but that's what it can do very, very good. Cognitive insight, gaining insight through data analysis and cognitive engagement. Another study talks about the strategic use of artificial intelligence. I like that very much because it's about the decision-making process. And the point is it will do its own process. Yeah. And you get a result and then here I added the this intuitive decision making. It's a new research project of mine with Dr. Joanna Roszak in, in Poland. You will get information on your technology, on your mobile devices, and then you need to intuitively decide how to do it. Machine to machine communication and for example, machine to human interaction. Very interesting, great chart. I love this chart, but when you look at all the connections, you will find not a lot of research about it. So how to do really a business strategy, yeah? Uh, customer employment engagement, automation, yes, uh, but the alignment between IT strategy and business strategy is still a problem. Another study, here, enabling drivers and technologies. Well, what do we need to talk about? Big data, big data, algorithms for sure, machine learning, and national language processing, yeah, human text language. What is the hardware for it? We will not talk about that a lot. Very technical, neural network models. Very, very interesting. My assistant uh, writes a diploma thesis about that. And then the GPU, uh, produced by NVIDIA, we all know the company, yeah, they they have a stock price going up 10,000% and uh, massively parallel processors to accelerate applications. Com algorithms to identify and analyze images. So that's the new thing that they can see. Artificial intelligence can see us if you train the systems. Another literature study says we need to talk about expert systems, machine learning, robotics, intelligent decision support systems, and the pattern recognition, uh, voice and visual recognition. So that gives an overview by books and by literature studies. And that's why I'm teaching my students always to look at that to get a good overview. The definition, everybody has to define what he's talking about. And I gave an interview to Spruchreif in Germany. I translated it. What is artificial intelligence? I can tell you by now, there will be no common understanding, but 
these are various technologies that enable computers to capture, understand, decide, act, and then learn from data. They can do it all. We just watch them doing this. And I tell my students always, with artificial intelligence, you need to be either on the side where you program artificial intelligence or artificial intelligence will tell you what to do. The term cannot be clearly defined and you see some old names there because uh, artificial intelligence actually started in the 1950s. Yeah, and there's Maculo and Pitts, we all know them, Wiener, Shannon Weaver and Turning and von Neumann. Yeah, all the old names in the beginning, then there was a long valley in the research and now it came back with ChatGPT. So addressing ever more complex decision-making problems, and that's a new thing, the computers will decide and it's the next in computing, a whole new generation. It achieves intelligent behavior and there's a problem solving and decision-making process autonomously. AI means the ability of machines to understand situations, think autonomously, and make suitable decisions themselves. Think about the drones in war that fly on their own and they have a target and they decide on their own whether they shoot or not. And you cannot control them anymore. That's the really frightening part right now. We have that every day in the news due to the Ukraine war in Germany, every day in the news. So artificial intelligence for private use, your students, your researchers, you all know it, ChatGPT. Yeah, that's the latest uh, and, and most well-known application last year. And uh, if you look at where is the most private use of artificial intelligence on the chart to the right, India. I was really not surprised, but India has a very high percentage of consumers already using um, AI. And as you can see, Morocco, Argentina, Brazil, Indonesia, South Africa, Philippines, these are all countries that are not as well, as well developed as United States or Western Europe, but they jump from their level, make a big step forward directly towards artificial intelligence. And you all have it on Instagram, on ChatGPT. On Instagram, you can see a lot of applications, especially for the influencers to make videos and manage pictures and everything. This is what you see uh, on your phone or on your computer. But we talk about artificial intelligence for business use. So there are unprecedented opportunities for designing intelligent products yeah, and uh, implementing business strategy, human AI interfaces, data, privacy, security, ethics, labor, human rights, and national security problems that all need to be solved. So there is a huge um, workload ahead of us to do in this new era. For managers, AI introduces a variety of challenges because it's deciding on their own. Typically as a manager, we were deciding, we were teaching managers how to decide and now the machines decide. And many of the challenges are technical, yeah, like finding effective solutions for human interaction, interaction, overcoming issues of trust, safety, security, being careful to avoid negative consequences. However, many of these challenges also have moral and ethics character. We have a lot of literature on that in Germany. I always tell my students, we don't know how to do artificial intelligence, but we know how to do the rules and regulation and the ethical character uh, modules. We need to protect our workforce. You may have heard that the filming industry 
in Los Angeles uh, is on strike because uh, of artificial intelligence in movies. That will be a, G a big job loss for thousands of people. These systems will work autonomously. So one of the big management tasks is to deal with autonomy. Traditionally, so far, managing IT has been driven by the desire to drive positive outcomes through automating and informating. We told the machines what to do. Yeah? We try to reduce human error to make it with machines integrated and standardize the work while driving to greater control. Now it is less control. The systems work on their own. Autonomy of AI was human bracketed, where humans delegated, monitor, and control technology. Not anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, AI essentially helps automate and informate in completely new ways. Human program and algorithm, AI can seek information by providing it with decision-making to humans. We will get the, we will receive the information. And of, very often we don't know how the system made it, how it comes to this um, idea. It will be increasingly generative that means the thinking is more and more done by machines. Yeah, the last conference we got a lecture on um, customer relations with artificial intelligence. So first it was answering letters from customers. Okay, we thought, okay, that's, that's easy, I understand. But then based on these letters, it created a strategy how to deal with these kind of customers. The strategy was done by AI. And then we have the human machine interaction and we all know it if you drive a car with navigation systems, we got used to that a little bit that this lady in the car is telling us to go left and right, but this will be more and more in your job that you will follow the machine. As AI tools do more of the creative part of the knowledge work, humans do the integrative sense-making, or you just follow. Either you understand the systems and you can work with the systems, or you're just a follow-up. Imagine you're driving a truck. The navigation system tells you what to do. The camera looks at you and can see whether you are drunk, you are tired, you are happy, Maybe it stops your car because you're overly happy. Your wife calls you and says, oh, the baby is there. It's a boy. All of a sudden, your truck goes out on a parking spot. Why? Because you're overly happy and the car will think, oh, this guy is not able to drive a car. A unique knowledge is needed for the managing management of algorithms expectations. We have bots in online communication. They can shape the discourse among humans. So you're talking to a bot, maybe two bots talking to each other and humans get the result. Manage collaborative work practices. AI agent can exhibit varying levels of human characteristics and influence human reactions and interactions. Look at the schools in China. When I'm teaching in a class, I have 40, 50 people in front of me, I cannot see the single person and how it feels, maybe a little bit. But with artificial intelligence in China, they watch the children. And there in the third row on the left, there is a child very sad. And in the break, you can say, oh, you can you please come to me? Why are you so sad today? Artificial intelligence can do this much better than humans. Managing inscrutability. So in the past, programs, programmers programmed within their control, but today 
the ability to scrutinize, explain, and understand algorithmic activities is critical in establishing trust and accountability in AI. So we have a need to manage humans' understanding of algorithms and activity with an eye towards the level of that understanding as well as its purpose. There are a couple of things we need to uh, 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 then take care of. Opacity, transparency, explainability, and interpretability. I will not go into the details, but who oversees AI, humans or AI itself? Will AI control itself? Machine learning. Now we're coming to the key part, one of the key parts. In the past, AI learning was limited by human data analysis. You gave the system data, they analyzed it and gave you back the results. Today, AI technologies no longer learn from proprietary data. They get their own data from the internet. They can access data banks all over the world, retrieve the information in a large scale and can give you the result. This brings up managerial issues such as privacy and trust. Yeah. Maybe there is no privacy anymore. If you want in HR, if you want to know something about a person, you ask the AI and they find everything you ever posted on Facebook, on social media, or in all registers with the police or whatever. Do you trust the data? You can upload a fake resume and AI will catch the fake resume and will send it to your employer. All of a sudden, they say, oh, we didn't know you're much smarter than we thought you are. The knowledge of AI must be expressed as input into the computer in a manner that is acceptable to the computer, or the computer itself has now the ability to acquire the knowledge. They continuously summarize and improve the knowledge in practice, so they learn on top of each other what they processed once, they can learn from it and do it much better. So research about machine learning, yeah, that's a key part. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are a young person, a student, young researcher, this is the course you need to take, machine learning, to study the human learning mechanisms and how the human brain is thinking, because these machines work very similar to study learning mechanisms of people, to study machine learning methods to establish a learning system. This is what needs to be done. Now, when you're young, please take these courses. The research of machine learning is based on a variety of disciplines, information science, so IT. I always tell my students, you need to learn IT Otherwise, IT will tell you in the future what to do. Brain science, neuropsychology, logic, and fuzzy mathematics. These are the courses that you should please take at university now. Then you come to deep learning. Yeah? The concept of deep learning comes from artificial, artificial neural networks. Common deep learning algorithms include restricted Boltzmann machine, deep belief networks, convolutional neural networks, state autoencoder. These are different deep learning uh, algorithms that at least you need to understand what they do and how they work. There's a shift toward different forms of artificial intelligence learning beyond machine and deep learning. New algorithms rooted in adversarial approaches to learn exist already today. Generative adversarial networks involve two neural networks that make up a generator and a discriminator that function as adversaries. On top of that, they have an expert system. The expert system was the earliest field of AI research like a knowledge system. 
based on existing knowledge of humans. But now they have on top various knowledge systems that they can access parallel. So one AI system is working like many people, many experts at the same time. Intelligent computer program that uses professional knowledge provided by human expert to simulate the thinking process of human experts. So this simulates the brain. It uses knowledge and reasoning to solve complex problems that only domain experts can solve. The decision support system, as I said, the systems will decide, you will not get information and then decide. They will tell you already the solution, what you need to do. Knowledge intelligence, the application of intelligence and knowledge processing technology has improved to the ability to solve problems. It becomes a so-called intelligent system. In some companies, the artificial intelligence does the very smart work. And what are humans do? They do the stupid work, the problem where, for example, screws and little materials need to be sorted, a little bit too complicated for a computer and not efficient. So let a human do it. The intelligent work and the decisions is done by machine. Pattern recognition, this is so amazing. Voice recognition, uh, graphics, uh, visual um, recognition. The computers can see us. The computers see you. You look into the artificial intelligence and this machine tell you, you are sad, you are happy, you have a problem. You should get a nose job or get your ears, whatever. You, get new, you should go to the hairdresser, get a new haircut. They can observe you. They see you and can tell you what to do. The level of application of fuzzy mathematical models and artificial neural network models has developed rapidly, gradually replacing both traditional statistical models and structural pattern recognition models. Sounds a little bit mathematics, but this is the tools that can see and analyze. Yeah, We all know you have to train these systems. There was a documentary in Germany and I almost fell off the chair that people at home have to look at pictures and define what's the dog, what is a car, what is the model of the car. And these things need to be done a thousand, ten thousand, one million times. So it's not that the computer knows it from itself. People at home, they get 10 cents per picture, maybe five cents per picture to define what's on the picture so the machine learns it. So low level paid people make the computers very intelligent. Welcome to the new world, ladies and gentlemen. And then we have the robotics, yeah, the use in uh, a simulated human behavior. And the first generation program controlled the robot. It get instructed and performed step-by-step step what humans tell them. The new generation equipped with corresponding sensors, they can do themselves, vision, hearing, tactile sensors they have. They can operate by themselves and make decisions. The robots can analyze the information. It, it perceives by themselves. You don't get give them information, they get it themselves. Control its own behavior, respond to changes in the environment and complete complex tasks by itself. This gives you a little bit overview on artificial intelligence. And if I'm talking too much, I'm a German, sure I'm talking long and in detail, then you can stop the video now. I made an analysis for Spruchreif, that's a service technology company. And uh, 
I wrote an article about in artificial intelligence in the service area. The current trend is that in private customer sectors and in business customer sectors, business to business, AI is uh, on the rise. Online, the use of augmented reality is increasing. Online shops in particular are rapidly growing to develop solutions where you can interact with your computer. The metaverse is only just in the beginning, but branded goods company already are in the, uh, in the sphere. Facial recognition is a very big issue and the problem of cyber attacks and fake news, we all know, is increasing. So who are the leading innovators in the field of artificial intelligence for the services industry? According to Bitcom, it's a German association, 41% are US companies, 23 are companies from China. So that means over 60% of AI in the service industry is done in these two countries. Japan was only mentioned 7%, Israel, Taiwan, only 4%. Germany was not even on the list. Yeah? The only companies that work on this in a larger scale is SAP, Robert Bosch, and Siemens. So large corporations are currently converting marketing, sales, and customer service to AI and machine learning, not just for cost reasons, but also because of higher quality. In the last conference, the professor showed that AI can write better letters than humans. The letters are much more friendly, much better, have everything in thought of. In the US and in China, we see also a lot of startup companies but unfortunately only hesitantly in Germany, but I'm so sure in India you have a lot. So who are the leading companies? In the United States, for sure it's Alphabet, Google, Amazon, Meta, Facebook, Microsoft, and IBM. But the uprising small companies, OpenAI, we all know them, and NVIDIA, but also Workday, CrowdStrike, AppLovin, Arm Holdings, Maruti Tech Labs, Sololab, LX, and Open Excel. There are also Super Microcomputer and Palantir, a small company fast growing in terms, in, in just in case you want to invest into the stocks. They're all centered in Palo Alto. On the shiny side, the two big areas, it's all in uh, Shenzhen. It's companies like Alibaba, Baidu, Tencent, and WeChat. In Germany, we see now Timu aggressively getting into the market, fighting Amazon. Amazon is the market leader and has a monopoly in online sales and lots of other things. So China is addressing that issue. Imagine, I've been to Shenzhen some years ago. 50 years ago, this was a small village and the people were starving for hunger, 50 years ago. Now it's the world most modern city around the globe. How can we imagine AI in marketing? Yeah, in the private customer sector, business to computer, AI supports customer service. So you, when you order an Amazon or a Timo, you will talk to a machine. Algorithms answer customer inquiries much more precisely, more friendly, and more reliable than people. You always, we all experience that if you're a little bit bitchy, not very nice, the customer service representative, what does he do? He hangs up on you. Happened to you, happened to me. Artificial intelligence is always friendly. We are not talking about standard answers, but rather very individual and friendly responsive letters. Linguistic chatbots are very far along in the development and actually also in vocals, you can talk to the computer and order your products. 
online sales will boom and marketing and advertising agency will increasingly be replaced by IT-based service providers. You all know on your Instagram account that you can do your own videos, your own pictures, no need anymore for marketing agency. Even ChatGPT writes you the marketing strategy. How does the business consumer sector compare? In business to business, there is not that much interaction in the service industry yet, personally, directly, but AI-based and machine learning optimized processes such as AI-based customer lifetime value analysis and customer segmentation are already running in the background. That means that your sales team can analyze your customer needs so well, sometimes you don't know your need yourself. That means in sales, you can analyze the customer and call them and tell them, listen, you will have this problem tomorrow. You better order now. So the next best offer analysis, that's how it's called, identifies much better the need of your customers then they can do themselves. Do service users in the B2B sector deal with development AI differently than those in the B2B sector? Digitalization will bring changes for private and business customers, but it will also be more dangerous in, for the private consumers because you are not protected. There are ethical problems. You can get things from the internet nobody can control. Think about the little children, yeah? Cyber attacks on your cell phones are imminent and they are hardly protected. There's a, you get a tunnel vision, yeah? So children who learn and the machine learns what you like, teach you only in one direction. You never see left and right, yeah? We are influenced by fake news. Dealing with new technology must be learned. Uh, who teaches you this? There are filters and Photoshop. Who can you trust? In the business to business sector, are very different. Companies are experiencing major upheav upheavals in the workplace. AI is very present, but there's an IT department. You just call them. I have a problem. Can you help? There's an HR department who can help you. You get trainings, you get protective measures at, at work. Companies have consultants, security, compliance, and lots of trainings. So they can all help you to manage your stuff, your job, and feel and be safe at the workplace. Our other technologies develop, de developing, Metaverse, we talked about it briefly, uh, growing, not big yet, but growing, virtual and augmented reality everywhere. And that comes to the second part, the automotive industry. Now I go a little bit into details. Germany is a car country, so we need to talk about automotive. So it's about autonomous driving from car navigation systems to automotive uh, driving with sensors and with lasers, from location systems to automated steering, from measurement to autonomous vehicle control, safety systems, reducing poll pollution and optimizing uh, the engine. So the car will become a, a data set. All the information around a car can be controlled, worked with, they can sell you products, they can tell you where to drive, what not to do. And if you're in, just in front of an obstacle or an accident, the camera will see it before you see it. The systems react faster than humans. Autonomous driving um, is based on sensors like LIDAR, optical radar, that uses pulse lasers to probe the atmosphere by detecting backscattered energy with a photo detector. 
Its primary use used to determine concentrations of particular materials and aerosols in the atmosphere. So the car outside feels the environment. It collects data about road conditions, pedestrian information, combine this information with ad advanced IR algorithms and optimizes everything within your car, in your route. But also imagine you get into your car and the car sees you. The new Tesla has nine cameras, eight outside, two on each side. And where is the ninth camera? Inside on you. The car will know how you feel. If you're very sad, you cannot start the car. If you're drunk, you cannot start the car. They will see in your eyes that you have drunk alcohol. If you're overly happy, your car will not drive. In Germany, we say if you vote for the wrong party, if you don't pay your bills, if you have trouble with your girlfriend, the car will not work. So there is in the car, we're talking, controlling vehicles parameters, fuzzy logic controllers, and artificial neural networks. They were first implied in 1988 for vehicle speed control and continuously variable transmissions. Now they operate in an if-then statement. The fuzzy logic can be used in very various vehicle control systems, including ABS, engine control, automatic transmission, climate control, anti-skid steering. So all the information from the car gets analyzed simultaneously. Digital sensors, artificial neural networks. So the maximum vehicle control requires accurate feedback from systems, precise data collection, challenging due to complexity, noise interference, dynamic conditions, you drive in your car left and right, tons of information will get collected by the car. ANN creates virtual sensors to emulate system conditions. Virtual sensors extract information from existing physical sensors. So there's a complete engine control. Intelligent vision assist with augmented reality cameras, head mounted displays, yeah, so they can see everything that's 360 degrees around the car, behind, everywhere, left and right, the car sees everything. Intelligent voice recognition. So there's a natural language processing. You can talk to your car. Hidden Markov models, dynamic time warping, simple, uh, single utterance commands. So more and more, your car will operate not by clicking any buttons. It will talk to you. Mercedes-Benz introduced Lingatronic, the first speech recognition system in the 19. 96 S class models. Intelligent safety systems. So the cars will become more safe. Onboard cameras, radar, leader, GPS navigated digital maps. They will even talk to you and say, don't drive this road. This might be too dangerous. There are much more advanced features, data integration, and talk about it. Usage feedback to the company. So the car not only talks to you, the car talks to its original car manufacturer. So they receive information. Also the government, yeah? Uh, more and more information out of the car will be released to the governance, uh, government. So there are driving patterns that can be analyzed. Maintenance history, fault reporting, issue analysis, analysis, but also once in a lot time you drive too fast, the car will know it. The car will store all your bad things you did in the car. And remember, there is a camera in the car and knows what you're doing in the car. So onboard diagnosis. 
fuzzy interference action, static wavelet neural networks, vehicle-based diagnostics, diagnostics, and support vector machines. So lots of diagnosis will be done within this machine for all times of, of, of uh, components, engine, gorgeous, light, air condition, traction control, ABS, all the functions, everything will be um, recognized, it will analyze it and decide on their own. You don't even need to do anything. The car will do it on its own. The cars will also get designed with AR and manufactured with AR. So the car is a product of AI. Yeah, Intelligence design system, knowledge-based engineering, CAD, CAM, transformative failure models, modes and effective analysis. So Chrysler Corporation used KPE to develop cooling systems design assistance to assist design engineers to assist the engineers building and structuring the standards. Jaguar utilizes KPI for designing headlights, for example. So the EI will develop the new car. The transform system was developed to automate the designing of automotive transmissions by designing new transmission designs based on the predefined design restrictions. But soon the cars will develop themselves how they build the car. Intelligent assembly line management, global study process allocation systems and direct labor management systems. This is not only about reducing cost and maximizing efficiency for business people, but to enhance assembly line processes. The computer will watch how you build the car and then will make suggestions how to reorganize. Direct labor management system establishes standard labor times for various assembly tasks. So the whole labor department will be managed and optimized with all the needs of the employees. Vehicle production sequencing, constraint program and genetic algorithms. So as a high variety of vehicle types, sedans, wagons, cabriolets, whatever, with different, different parts, and now they can all be um, tailored to customer needs much more easy. Different colors for the car, yeah? and uh, maintaining a smooth supply demand curve in the supply chain. Intelligent control over production with integrated pain quality control systems, fuzzy reasoning, multivariable rule-based fuzzy controllers. So the production will be more and more automized. Supply chain and inventory management. Yeah, we have that. Uh, already much longer, but now the systems, they can order themselves new material within the supply chain. So one com AI computer can talk to the AI computer of another company and can deliver goods and services that is needed. After sales and warranty management, another part of the automotive industry, you see the variety of AI by now Servicing, repair, and maintenance. We have we all know about the predictive maintenance. So your car will know before what needs to be repaired. The, the car repair shop, they can call you and tell them, oh, it looks like you run 30,000 miles or kilometers. I think you should soon come to change your brakes they will know that before the car tells you to come to the shop. Intelligent warranty, warranty and insurance management systems. Oh my God, they will know how you drive. If you drive too fast, your insurance premium goes up. If you drive too slowly, I don't know what they do. Manage and access vehicle related in information, including selling date. Yeah, when is a good time to sell your car? When to buy a new one? 
warranty periods, regulations, and insurance policies. Lots of functions in the car manufacturing industry. If we have time, let's go last sector, finance and banking industry. Amazing opportunities. The financial services is service industries is traditionally considered a high involvement context company and area. They are very fast in uh, applying new technologies. Industry is moving at the forefront of adopting new technologies, leading to the rapid development of so-called fintech. The AI investment into fintech in the Asia Pacific market is expected for this year 4.3 billion US dollars. The research you see on the right hand side is steeply increasing in terms of research in the financial industry, skyrocketing. While some researchers discuss, discuss AI enabled chat box, robo advisors, or few AI in a general manner, others describe Techni technical terminology, machine deep learning algorithms, yeah, support vector machines, artificial neural networks. So these are new technologies just for the FinTech to get and pre create a better service to the customer. Identifying, explaining the different types of AI and machine learning methods uh, in all types of the industry. FinTech. New opportunities, what are we talking about? Mobile banking, online lending platforms, digital payment systems, robo advisories, blockchain applications. Blockchain, we know you can make contracts financially online without any paper. First time we heard about FinTech when? 1998 with PayPal. But if you see now, the investment into FinTech is enormously growing, especially 21, 22. So there's billions of dollars flowing into the FinTech market. That's a new market that maybe has to be disrupted. There are much more opportunities. <clears throat> um, let's look at the customer facing uh, financial services. I know I'm coming from the investment side. I worked 20 years in investor relations. So they are trading platforms. They are analytics that can optimize your investments. We all know of that. Great programs. Unbelievable. Once they go crazy, there can be a crash because they all start selling sh uh, 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 shares and then they manipulate each other. We have heard that in the news. However, look at the customer facing side of the FinTech. Uh, AI is creating a rush of opportunities in the financial sector. In-house, outsourced or eco-based systems, ecosystem based. The growth of AI FinTech firms has encouraged several mergers and acquisitions. So there is a lot of dynamics in the acquisitions market. Uh, the, the, the prices go skyrocketing. The benefits depend on the scale of an organization. Yeah, The bigger you run one machine, the more uh, leverage you have. However, risk arises from not representative data. Bias inherent in representative data, choice of algorithms and human decisions. So now you're not talking to environment, to nature, you're talking to people. You need to understand the people that you're banking with. So risk reduction requires a vigilant division of labor between AI and humans to foresee the future. You don't want just to do marketing and wait until someone buys a product, you're acquisitioning a customer, you give them a loan, a credit card, 
What if they don't pay you back? Big, big risks. Banks are increasingly relying on AI to improve the customer experience in online banking and various other uh, uh, mobile phones. You know? Expand their use of, of, of AI through conversational chatbots to assist customers. So you will more and more talk to the computer chats and they will analyze you when they see you coming to the bank or wherever you are. Large benefit intelligence of conversational software agents and chatbots. Digital marketing for financial services is not simple as collecting big data and using analytical, analytical algorithms. The technology may not always help business target their customers more effectively. Financially vulnerable customers want to be avoided. So, however, if you analyze who is a good customer or not by humans, imagine a machine is evaluating you. You will go to your bank and you want a loan and the machine says no. Why? The guy in the bank does not even know because they don't know the algorithms. They don't know what data they use. They just say no, and nobody knows why you don't get the loan. AI impact on Indian banks is very big. Yeah, AI in chatbox, virtual assistance, ATM had reduced technical inefficiency to 11%. Yeah, that was measured by 47 commercial banks. So especially Indian banks are doing very, very well in um, managing customers. Robo-advisors, AI-driven digital advisory plot platforms offering automated financial services, speech recognition, and chatbots. They lower the service fees and they have 24 seven access for the consumers, yeah? You can get advice whenever you want. It's just by a machine. Despite advantages, consumer uptake has been slow. So the consumers and financial industry is not taking the systems fast, but it is growing. The research about financial advice and investments examines if robo-advisors can use can reduce retail investors' behavioral bias. So you see a lot of uh, studies going on on how to interact with the, co the customer for advance, uh, financial advice and personal investment. I've done that myself when I was young. I was uh, 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 consulting people, friends, family. Now a computer tells them what to do. The credit scoring and risk assessment done automatically by AI. General financial services, AI in creating various opportunities for financial organizations, replacing routine tasks, augmenting services employees with AI. Lots of financial services will get delegated to the machine. Consequences of AI-powered chatbots service failures in financial technology, investment, banking support include customer frustration. I just had one hour to solve a problem. The telephone hung up three times. The chatbot didn't work. They want to connect me. It was a nightmare. Nobody helps you. You're talking to machines. Financial losses, what if you lost money? You're talking to a machine and complain? Regulatory risks, compliant issue may arise if chatbots provide incorrect or unregulated advice. So the chatbots need to understand all the regulations to give you advice <clears throat> that is legal. But what if you want to make a special investment that is a little bit illegal but higher revenue? You know what I mean. Bankers all do that. Reputational damages. Failures can harm the reputation of the financial institution, affecting customer loyalty. You don't even know why. 
operational disruptions or legal consequences, you understand it by now. Risks in AI rises from non-representative data, bias in representative data, algorithm choice, and human decisions that maybe interfere and are not really very logic. Financial regulations, they change over time, very complicated. Sometimes they conflict each other. One regulation conflicts another one. We have that in the European Union. Many times we are over bureaucratic. The data ownership, consumer privacy, the cybersecurity. So lots of financial regulation problems. That concludes my little bit longer speech. Thank you very much for listening. Here you have my online business card to Australia University, all my academic networks, my ORCID number, research gate. If you are a researcher, contact me. You can contact me on social networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. And I'm very happy talking to you, working together with you. I love to come to India in February. I love to work with Kandapan in Malaysia. I invite you all to our COSIM conference online. I invite you to our COSIM seminars in Germany, in Uelzen. We will visit Hamburg, Lübeck, Schwerin, Bremen, and Berlin, great cities. And I hope I will see you all soon in person. And uh, I send you Kindest regards from Berlin, yours, Markus Launer.